We're gonna talk dual PC setups or dual Mac setups, PC in the general term. <laughs> I shouldn't probably do that. Um, we're gonna get down to business, but before I do, I'm gonna give myself a chance to catch my breath <laughs> before I start talking for reals. Um, but also I wanna say hi to everyone. I see so many of you. Um, you know, in the chat room, uh, we've got some newbies in the house. If you are new, please do type new in the comments. I would love, love, love to meet you. And I know we've got the Monday energy going. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it's been a while since I went full out with the countdown timer dancing. So, you know, a lot of good stuff is happening in my world and I'm really excited about some upcoming stuff. So I was feeling the energy this morning and just excitement. <laughs> so, and you all also said, uh, where do I get music like that? You can get your music right here at Epidemic Sound, a uh, free 30 day trial. So you don't actually have to commit to anything. You can check out their song list, see if you like it, play with it, use it for a little while. Um, and honestly, some of my favorite songs just in my personal life. I listen to my Epidemic Sound playlist constantly, <laughs> like just while I'm jamming around uh, in the house. So uh, that's super, super beneficial. And it is, you know, copyright free music. So you're not going to get yourself into trouble with those copyright claims. All right, we have, oh yeah, no, that, no, that's not recorded. That's not recorded. I've only done that once in my entire life. And that was because it was a joke. There was a, there was a, a joke. I see so many people here saying new. Hold on. Let's give everybody a big shout out. Jeffrey Davidson, uh, Dwayne Messer. Thank you so much for being here. David Hunt, you are not new. <laughs> Mark Buchanan. Hi. Uh, Jorge, uh, Peter, holy cow. You guys, um, so many awesome new faces, new names. Thank you for being here. Participate. Uh, so what the the kind of format of this is, is we're going to get into the topic for today. And I'm going to just kind of go and train you and go through all of the things that you need to know. After that's over, then I will to Q&A. So if you have a question at any time, you can actually... Um, you can actually uh, put a cue in front of your question and that will make its way into my cue so that uh, I don't miss it because uh, we get a lot of comments and we're multi-streaming on different platforms. Uh, hello, True Radio. Welcome, holy cow. I did say that, didn't I? <laughs> hello, AC. Wow, so many great new people. I love it. So participate. This is an amazing community. If you're on the Ecamm channels or if you're on the live streaming pros channels, these are amazing community members full of support and love. So make yourselves uh, known and, and uh, feel right at home. All right. Are you guys ready to get down into the business of today? I have caught my breath and I've welcomed all of our new people. So I am. All right, let's do this. Let's get this party started. The benefits of a dual computer streaming setup, whether you're talking about a PC setup or a Mac setup, we're going to dive into both. And in fact, you could actually combine both a PC and Mac setups if that's something that you're interested in. These are great for presentations for gaming, video games, for webinars, for demos, for lots more. And we'll talk about what you can do with a dual streaming setup or dual computer streaming setup. And we'll talk about why you would want to. And I'll also show you exactly what you need to be able to do so. So let's dive in. So you'll actually see that I am actually using um, this set up right now. This is a presentation, a, a keynote presentation that is coming into my stream from a completely separate computer than what is streaming out right now. So I have two computers, a laptop and an iMac that are running this entire presentation. So I'll show you how we actually do that. But let's talk about why you would want to in the first place. Why would you wanna add extra gear into your studio setup if you don't have to? Well, the benefit, the biggest benefit of this is actually the fact that it offloads a lot of the CPU usage, the, the 
computer power. Your streaming machine, the one that you have your software on that is sending that signal out to your live stream, is is it's taken a lot right so like it's a heavy load just to stream and send that signal out and do all of the graphics that you're looking to do so what you can do is actually offload a lot of that power or resources onto a secondary computer and then that helps your streaming machine stay focused because <laughs> you know computers focus but also stay clear of any of being bogged down with extra work that isn't necessarily necessary. And your streaming computer needs to be a really good machine. However, your secondary machine, whether it's a PC or a Mac, doesn't actually have to be as good as your other machine. So if you have an old computer lying around, I have two of them uh, that I use for these purposes, you can bring that in and it doesn't have to be a beast of a machine. So that's really super helpful. So some things that you can actually do with this are presentations like you just saw me do, like a keynote presentation. Let's say you're going on to Zoom to do a speech or a presentation for your company or whatever the case may be. You could do this, bring your entire production into Zoom and um, wow everybody on Zoom, right? Get rid of that Zoom fatigue. Uh, you could use this for gaming. Uh, so if you wanna play a game, really super helpful, especially since gaming and streaming are two of the most uh, resource intensive types of activities you can do on a computer. Separating the two and not letting them play together is actually really beneficial. You could also demo. Uh, let's say you're doing a demo of any kind, but even let's say we're talking about combining a PC and Mac, right? Let's say you want to demo an operating system that is a different one than you're streaming on, or you could do a demo of any kind that you can think of on that secondary machine. So what would you need in order to do this? Well, you're looking at a capture card and I'll show you the one that I recommend. Um, you also need to make sure that your cable, your HDMI cable going from the capture card to the computer can actually be is long enough so that it can reach that secondary computer. Sometimes like gamers and, and other uh, you know uh, examples, uh, have that secondary computer kind of a little further away than right in front of you. So just think about that. You need an HDMI port on that secondary machine um, or you need an adapter. So me, I'm running an adapter right now, a USB-C to HDMI adapter. And this is my main setup minus that adapter. I've got my iMac, right? That's the streaming machine. That's what's running this whole show. And then I've got my capture card. And if you are not familiar with a capture card, what this does is it converts a signal. So typically we use these capture cards for converting our HDMI signal from our camera to the USB that the software and that the computer can read. And most of the time we're talking about it in a camera scenario, but here's the cool thing. It can also be used for other devices like a computer to bring in that as an additional quote unquote camera. And then that's just plugging directly. That's basically the middleman between your second computer and your primary machine. And then if you are into gaming, then you can do the same thing with streaming con or game consoles as well. So you have options, a lot of options when it comes to this. Now, uh, I know that you're going to ask, well, what about NDI? Do I have to have a capture card? Could I do it wirelessly? You could, however, I don't prefer NDI as an option just because it's, at, it's not as reliable as plugging in. So it is an option if you um, are just bringing in a computer um, and you don't care about the reliability or you have a good experience and you're not ready to purchase a secondary capture card. Um, but you can, but <laughs> I just prefer everything wired in and um, tightened up that way. Um, but also uh, if you're if you are doing games, uh, then a streaming console, most streaming consoles aren't going to have that NDI option. Now, 
A word of warning is audio. So if you need audio from your secondary machine, you just need to give yourself time to test. I'm not gonna go into depth on this video about that just because it is in depth and a lot of different scenarios. You might need something like loopback uh, in order to route that audio correctly, but not necessarily. So you just need to think about that and test ahead of time before you decide, I'm gonna go live in five minutes and then your audio is screwed up. Okay. So just a word of warning there. Now, um, I'm, that's it. Like that is it at its basic, simple setup. Now, what I want to do is actually show you how to build this out in Ecamm live, the software that I use. Now, keep in mind that this concept is the same across any software that you might be using. And I'm just going to demo it in Ecamm so that you can understand just how to build this out for yourself. So I'm going into demo mode or I'm going into demo mode now. And what I'm going to do is actually add a new scene. And I'm going to start with a blank scene, no camera whatsoever. It's just black. Then I've got an overlay. So I'm just going to drag and drop this overlay, this pip style, um, so that I can um, add my cameras and then the second the computer will go here in that pip that I showed you before, right? That's what we're building out right here is this pip example. And you can just go through your slides just like you would normally. All right, so let's add a camera. So we're gonna go into the overlays box right here and we're gonna scroll down to show in current scene. And then I'm just gonna add a camera and this is defaulting to my secondary camera, which as you can see is the Camlink 4K. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is actually go into custom. I like the custom option because it gives me full control. And I'm just going to uh, kind of piece this into this frame. Now, uh, also, if you don't have overlays like this, you can buy them at our store. We have a link in the description for that. Now I'm gonna send this backwards so that you see the frame here and that's not hidden. Now I'm gonna add my camera and we'll change this camera to here, go custom and drag that over here. It's super, super simple, y'all. Uh, you really don't need a lot of time to set up for this. However, you do need to test always. Um, never set the stuff up immediately right before you're planning to go live. Um, and so, yeah, so you can kind of go through your presentation. That is it. That is all I needed to do. I don't have audio in my presentation, so that's something to consider once again. Now. If you're using any other software, you can uh, set that up in a similar format um, to, to the process, right? Just consider that process and adapt it for whatever software you're using. But I use Ecamm Live. This is on the Ecamm Live shows or channels, um, and it's my favorite streaming software. Uh, so if you do want uh, graphics and uh, overlays and things like that that you can use and build out for this scenario, you can go right here, livestreampros.com slash store. All right, so that is it at its core. I hope this gave you a good overview of how you can use a secondary computer in order to um, offload resources, gain extra flexibility. Personally speaking, I love having everything separated because then I'm not kind of managing things on that same machine. It just, for me, uh, process and workflow oriented. I love that. So I hope that you'll find a good use out of this. Drop a comment below and let me know what you're going to do with your secondary machine and what secondary machine you're going to use. And I will see you in the next video. All right, so you guys are watching live. Uh, don't you worry, I'm coming back to you. Uh, we are going to do Q&A now. Uh, so, uh-oh. Oh no, capture card, fail. <laughs> I'm ordering a whole bunch of uh, new gear. 
uh, for the studio and uh, that I'm going to replace in my capture cards. I, I beat them to death. <laughs> like it's just like, I'm just constantly using them. <laughs> All right. So we will go deeper into those setups and more advanced setups. Um, but for now, I just wanted to make sure that you understood how to use that because I find that so many people don't understand that that's even a possibility. And so I just wanted to make sure that I introduced that concept so that you have that capability to start the process and then we can advance further. Now, um, if you have questions, be sure to put a cue in front of your question. That way it will make its way into my queue. So I'm gonna start, um, oh, real quick. Ooh, uh, last day of the Ecamm Great Create Giveaway. Three amazing gear packages that you will love. So if you haven't entered that, now is the chance. Today is the last day to do that. Um, <laughs> I do believe in hardwire only. It's good enough for Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're funny. Uh, oh yes, thank you, Paul. I appreciate you suggesting that as well. Um, all right, okay, lots of questions coming through, so let's tackle. Uh, quick Kuiku, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. Let me know and if I butchered it and I apologize if I did. Uh, are the streams unlisted after they're streamed live? Is it a good idea to unlist your live streams after streaming? Uh, that's a that's an in-depth conversation, not really relevant to this, but I want to I want to answer that. Sorry, I have product showcase turned on um, and I shouldn't have, I should have turned that off. I was doing a, a demo. Um, <laughs> so when I move my hands, it kind of, gets crazy. So the answer to that is um, I don't unlist them. I will enlist them if they don't benefit me strategically on my channel. Um, so t what we do is we actually edit on the live streaming pros channels. We edit it down so that it's a really tight video for replay. Um, and so that's been working out incredibly well. We've actually been able to increase our retention by 1300% on our AVD uh, or our AVP uh, on YouTube. So that has been massively beneficial to us. So it depends on your strategy. It depends on the content and whether people are going to find benefit in that after the fact. So uh, that's a more complicated question, but hopefully that gets you a list, at least started. Oh, and the secret code for the giveaway. Are you guys ready? Write this down. Secret code for the giveaway, if you're going to enter it, is E-C-L-3-P-T-9. That's E-C-L-3-P-T-9. All right, Sammy, if I have the new MacBook Pro M1, do you think that I should still use two Macs? Great question, Sammy. You, The M1s are going to run things like a champ, right? So um, you don't have to necessarily, unless you find that your computer is bogging down. Let's say you kind of go six months out, you've added a whole bunch more to your production, and you've added apps that are kind of bogging the system down generally. If you start to see some lags, start to see some, some slowness to your computer, then definitely adding that second computer can help. You don't have to necessarily with the M1s, but like I was saying, workflow wise, I much prefer it. Even if my computer can handle it, I prefer having that separated because mentally speaking, I'm working over here and then I'm working over here, right? For the two different things. Um, and you know, even something like a keynote slide. Okay, let's just, oops, hold on, sorry. <laughs> um, let's, so like if I'm going into the keynote slide and I'm running through my presentation, my laptop is right here with my arrow keys that I can just hit with my left hand. My hand rests on those arrow keys and I just run that. If you're running it on the same machine, you have a little bit of jiggling to do. Now you can set up Stream Deck icon, Stream Deck keys uh, to run through that presentation. So there are lots of options um, when it comes to live streaming. Nuance is the name of the game. <laughs> there are a lot of options for a lot of different things. This is an option that I find super beneficial, even if my computer can really handle it. Uh, Ashley, would two MacBook Pros work together? Absolutely, absolutely. Any, if you have MacBook Pro, two MacBook Pros, an iMac and a MacBook Pro, if you have a, a MacBook Pro and a PC, uh, it doesn't really matter kind of the configuration that you're, that you're working with. Um, as long as you have that capture card, bringing that in is definitely an option. 
uh, Intan, if I use the PC, the second computer doesn't matter, PC or Mac. Can I use? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Doesn't really matter. You can mix and match. You can start your PC. It could be your streaming computer. You wouldn't use Ecamm in that case, but uh, you would use something like vMix, right? So you can mix and match however you see fit. Um, all right. All things YouTube. Matt, can an iPad with work with a capture card? Yes. There are multiple ways to bring in a, an iPad, but with an adapter, uh, I believe I've done that in the past. Um, so you could, but you could also bring in an iPad in other ways with apps. Uh, so that might be something that you want to look into as well. I think we've covered that on this show. Um, Volker, does it have to be an Elgato capture card or is a cheaper one t uh, okay too? Great question, Volker. Um, you, so the capture card, the Elgato Cam Link 4K is one that I recommend because it is spectacular. It works really, really well, and it's high quality. Um, so some of the cheaper capture cards don't actually produce the same quality. Would that matter if it's only a computer? Eh, right? It depends on what you're bringing in. Is it a video file? Is it a presentation that has a lot of intense graphics? It depends on what you're bringing in in terms of that capture card quality and how much that matters. I prefer to go full full quality for everything, but um, that is uh, something that you could test. And, you know, with Amazon's return policy or Best Buy's return policy or B&H's return policy, you have the ability to test and send back if it doesn't work. And in fact, um, we uh, have a video coming soon-ish, probably in November, uh, about a kind of showing capture cards, uh, then comparing them. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> comparing capture cards and the quality differences. Now we already have a video that shows the difference between like your computer and, um, and adding that into your production via USB versus capture card. So that's something to also, that's a kind of a side note, but that's out there as well. It's November today. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for that for that reminder. I can't believe it. I don't know how that happened. What? <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Uh, Russell, using... Okay. So the Elgato Cam Link versus the HD60S Plus, um, both... So my camera is the HD60S Plus. The computer right now is running off the Cam Link. Sometimes I swap those, but I, I tend to use the HD60S Plus for my main camera. Um, they're both qualities are fantastic. The HD60S Plus just offers a, an extra uh, feature that most people don't even use. So it's... It, I just kind of tend to recommend the cam link because it's a little bit more straightforward and people don't make mistakes with that if they don't need that extra feature on the 60S plus. Um, DJ right on beat. That took me a second to read that username. <laughs> DJ right on beat. Uh, are you using a remote to switch keynote pages? No, I, I you might have heard me say this. Ooh, oh, oh, Anar, Anar, I'm so sorry. Hold on, hold on, Anar, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't think it'll fire. Sorry. Thank you so much for your super sticker, Anar. <laughs> Appreciate you. So, um, what was I answering? Oh, I, yeah. You. There it goes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the. I'm just running the um, with the, the arrows because I just lay my hand on the computer pad and like I just hover over those arrows and just flip. And um, you could use a remote that would totally work too. Just depends on your on your workflow and your habits and the desire. Like when I'm speaking on stage, I use a remote. But for this particular scenario, I just I just hit the buttons. Um, let's see. Can it be an old Windows Seven PC? Test, 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 test. Um, maybe like it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter in terms of the connection. You know, what are you doing on that secondary computer if it's a Windows 7? Um, are you, is it, is it resource heavy, like at playing a video? Then that may not work so well, but you can try it and see for sure. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then, you know, upgrading at some point uh, to be able to do that. Um, actually, I want to bring up this. I, 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 this is a really important point, so I'm going to come back to this. Um, 
only downside to the iPad is the screen ratio. So that is an issue that a lot of people face uh, when it comes to bringing in those iPads as well. Um, so it depends on what you want to show on that iPad, but just know that those screen ratios are different than what you work with in, in a computer uh, as well. So, okay. You missed everything, Stuart. You missed everything. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and and that's that's what I'm saying, right? Is like it doesn't necessarily matter, right? It, it should work perfectly fine, even if it's an older computer. But if it has trouble running something like a video or it kind of gets bogged down easily, that might cause you problems in and of itself, just like it would with a streaming machine, but you're gonna have less, a lower barrier to entry for your second computer than you are your main streaming machine. Okay, great question. Wait, hold on, sorry, I'm skipping. CK, streaming machine has the streaming software and all other streaming gear tech like Stream Deck connected to that computer. Additional computers can handle other stuff, right? Yes, exactly correct. So you're, when I say streaming machine, I'm talking the thing that your computer is plugged into, uh, the thing that has your software that is running and sending that signal out to YouTube, Facebook, or wherever else. Uh, and then it also has the stream deck and you know your audio device as well. So that's what's holding together the entire production. Everything else can be offloaded, but you're not going to like set your, you're not going to be able to like put your stream deck on a secondary computer and run that unless there's some kind of hack I don't know about. But yeah, so everything streaming related needs to be there. And then any assets or other things can be offloaded. Um, where does a browser streaming application like Restream fit into this setup? Um, so, so it doesn't, so it will see like, Restream, StreamYard, or browser-based applications will see a capture card um, as a camera, just like Ecamm does or vMix, right? Um, but what you're not going to be able to do with that is multi-cam. So it doesn't really work. <laughs> so it's going to see one or the other. Um, and so that's not really going to be beneficial to you in that case. Okay, that's a, that's a really good point, though. Images by Gretchen. Uh, can this be... Oh, I already answered that. Um, is it best to disable live chat and comments for live streams? Absolutely not. <laughs> Don't disable that. Um, absolutely, you want the chat. That's the beauty of um, of live streaming is the connection and the comments and the conversation that you have. So don't disable that. Now, if you edit your video... Thank you, DJ Easy. I'm going to come back to you here in just a second. I'm just going to finish my thought. Um, if you, and I don't remember what my thought is. <laughs> you totally wrecked my train of thought there. I don't remember what I was answering. <laughs> if somebody wants to remind me, I'll come back to it. So DJ Easy, thank you so much for the $5 super chat or five pound. Uh, what camera are you using for your live stream? Is it a DSLR? It's really crisp. So I'm using the Sony ZV-E. 10, uh, which is the newer Sony camera that came out. Um, so the, uh, that, yeah, it's a, it's technically a mirrorless camera. Um, and any of the Sony, Sony a 6100, Sony ZV-E 10, which is one of my favorites. Now the Sony ZV-E 10 has a couple of, um, extra, functionality that other cameras don't, but even the Canon M50 is a great camera. Lots of great cameras that you can use. Those are our like kind of recommended ones. Um, we have a whole playlist on the ZV-E10 if you wanna watch that so that you can kind of understand more about that camera if you're looking to purchase one. Okay, yes, thank you, Paul. It was about disabling comments. What I was gonna say is if you edit your video, your live stream after the fact, once it's done being live, then your comments will go away. Um, so just understand that. You know, I was talking earlier about how I edit my streams. Um, those, we lose comments. We lose our live chat replay from that. But to me, it's worth it because of the, I mean, look at up to 30, 1300% increase in retention by doing that. So it's not just that that we did, but 
a lot of other things uh, factor into it, but um, that's one of the, the benefits of doing that, but you just lose comments, so. Okay. Uh, let's see. And yes, I should clarify, the M50 Mark II, don't go buy the M50, so thanks for that. Uh, I just, I, I kind of think, like, yeah, I just left off the Mark II. So if you are going to buy an M50, make sure it's the latest model, the M2, the Mark II, uh, because the, M, the first one does not actually play as well for live streaming. So be sure to pay attention to that. <laughs> um, is, oh, okay, hold on. Oh, I already answered. Okay, I already answered those. Okay. Oh, <laughs> David DeFranco, uh, just getting here. I have to say, I love my dual PC setup for streaming. It makes so much, so much easier. How many of you, did we do a poll or anything on like how many of you are using a, a two computer setup? Um, that's, uh, I, I would love to, I would love to find out. And how many of you are you thinking about adding that after today's session? So let me know in the comments, what are you going to do with your setup um, and that secondary computer? I, I love I love doing it that way because it just, workflow wise, it's just so much easier and the benefit of, you know, the, the CPU. Uh, I'm using the, the ZVE-10. I have switched my main camera to the ZVE-10. Now, I am, um, I, oops, I forgot to my, <laughs> You let me go this whole time and I forgot to close my door. <laughs> I just saw that. Um, so I am, there are some focus uh, things that I'm uh, working on, on this camera um, that, that might just be unique to my setup. So we're doing some tests to figure out because like I do have some hunting going on um, and all of the settings are correct. So I do have a complicated kind of background, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'll keep you guys updated. I'm just, I'm doing some, a series of tests uh, with different settings um, that aren't normal <laughs> and different lenses and things like that. How about a four computer setup? You could absolutely do that. So keep in mind, so this is where the A10 mini may come into Play with you or the ATEM, any of them. Um, so four computers, you need four capture cards. Simple as that, right? You're going to bring in those different computers with the different capture cards. So you can add as many as your streaming machine can handle if it can't handle four cameras. Because when you're attaching your computer to your streaming, when you're attaching a secondary computer to your streaming machine, you're really thinking about those as extra cameras, right? In terms of load. Uh, and so, and, and how the software sees it as well. So if your computer, your streaming machine cannot handle four devices connected to it, then you are looking at something like the ATEM that you can connect all of those four different computers to an ATEM and then bring the ATEM in via USB as a single source now, you don't have the capability at that point to do things like what I demoed, which is bring that as an overlay into Ecamm and have a lot more fine-tuned adjustments. So you lose some things, but you gain some things with the ATEM. I have a video that breaks all of that down on the Live Streaming Pros channel, so I'd highly recommend looking at that if you're not sure that, or if you test it, I would really test it first, see if you need something to offload even more resources. All right. Have you had any troubles updating to, oh, so I don't use OBS. People on my team um, are the OBS trainers. Uh, so I'm going to let them answer that in the comments. I have not heard of anybody doing or having some issues with Windows 11 and OBS. Sorry. Um, but hopefully somebody in the community, there's an amazing community. I'm sure they can help you. Uh, yes, start going to start using two computers didn't know it was that easy with cam link yeah it's super simple to, honestly in today's prep i was like what else can i add because i feel like this is like super simple right of course we can go more advanced and we can tackle audio issues and things like that um but i wanted to keep it like an overview but then i was like it's too simple <laughs> everybody's gonna be like why did i even show up <laughs> But I know that this was super helpful because I know from conversations in our regular live streams that 
most of you don't know that you can do it, just like Insight Photos was saying. Uh, I may try another one, but right, my, right now my MacBook Pro is doing okay. Awesome. You have the knowledge in your hands when you need it then. Uh, thank you so much for being a follower and, and, and being a part of this community. Uh, and yeah, thanks for hanging. I thought Callie was in there and was hoping she would casually walk out into the living room. Oh, <laughs> she's hanging out in the bathroom. No. <laughs> Let's see, Austin is going to be adding a Mac Air M1 to my Windows setup with vMix to do some offloading and have access to both systems for my videos. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> Stream is connect all the things. Connect all the things. All right, I'm scrolling down. I, got, I went backwards on comments. Let's see. Okay, there you go. Daniel's used OBS on Windows 11. So uh, if you're having trouble, you might... Uh, see if there's some support groups. Um, let's see. So yes, these are all other options, right? I did talk about NDI being an option um, and it is not, so if you're doing iOS, but if you're bringing in a computer, like I don't even have an iPad, right? I don't use iPads. Um, not everybody does. So you have different flexibility uh, or different options for how you bring things in. Again, NDI, I prefer to be plugged in, um, but I also, I, I, what, we've, what we've figured out is that I have some network issues here as well. Um, so NDI is less reliable for me than some other people. So the, so some people have great success with NDI, not everybody does. So it's, really that's why i always just like i like to talk to the majority of people and not hone in on a, a minority of like people who have great success with it so <laughs> that's why i like the powered the the, the plugging in model the most complicated thing about a two pc setup is affording two pcs Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, but that's the thing is like a lot of people have old computers lying around that they're not really using or as you're upgrading, lots of people are now upgrading to the M1s. Um, so as you're upgrading to the M1 or a newer PC or whatever it is for you, um, keep your keep your other computer. Um, now often people sell them, but, or you could sell that one if it's still in great shape and you could, um, go find on Facebook marketplace or eBay or something, a simpler computer, uh, that, you know, isn't as costly to keep versus sell. Right. So you have lots of options, get creative. That's the thing is, when it comes to affording all of this gear and all of the things that you need, there are always options. There are always solutions. Um, as Marie Forleo says, everything is figure outable. I love that quote. She has a whole book on it. If you want to get good at, um, we were talking about books the other uh, last week on uh, the Friday show. Uh, if you want to get good at being adaptable and finding possibilities where there may seem that there are none, I would highly encourage you to read that book. Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo. Uh, it is great mindset work for that kind of thing. And that applies to finding ways to add gear if you're budget, if you're tight on budget. So get creative, get uh, flexible, and don't think that you need the best of the best of every piece. Now, I do talk about in the video called The Tech Chain, how everything needs to be high quality in order to get the highest quality output, but that doesn't mean that it has to be expensive. Right? So it, there's a two different conversations. So I would really, really, really encourage you to think about those things when it comes to your studio, because I think too many people get stuck on perfectionism or um, needing the, the most expensive so that they can say they have an expensive studio. What's the point of that? Like, okay, <laughs> so you spent more than me. Great. I was able to spend more over here on something else, right? Like that's not really a point of pride or shouldn't be, but it is. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm done ranting. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, 
I have a new 16 inch MacBook M1 Pro. Was going to get rid of my M1 Mac Mini and maybe consider it uh, using keeping it for a dual setup. There you go. There you go. You have all of the options at your hands. Complete hardwire Ethernet setup with NDI between two Windows 10 PCs has been fairly stable for me. Church setup using ProPresenter and vMix for the past three years. Awesome. I'm glad that you're finding uh, stability with that. <laughs> Wait, I am? I'm the most important? Oh, you mean you. You running it are the most important thing in the tech chain. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I had to. <laughs> All right, you guys, um, anything else you want to talk about or ask questions about? I know I went through that training really quickly, um, but I also think it's that simple. It's really, truly that simple, which is exciting. So uh, if you don't have any other questions, I will wrap this baby up. But if you do have questions, um, then be sure to ask right now. If you want graphics for your show, for your streams, so that you can really um, enhance the professional quality of your videos and your streams, go check these out, livestreamingpros.com slash store. Uh, we have all kinds of different designs, different options, countdown timers. And uh, those of you who loved the, the music in the countdown timer, if you don't join us for the countdown timer, you're missing out on the pre-show. You've got to come for the pre-show. Those are, those are fun because you get the community gets to hang out. Uh, I'm playing dance music, we're dancing, we're having fun. Uh, so you can get your own music there. You don't have to dance on camera, don't worry. But adding music to your production can really help with that, um, that flow and that professionalism as well. Uh, and do I have videos to design these graphics from scratch? We have a video on a Canva tutorial uh, that uh, I did with our great Greg Corhan on our team, uh, because I don't do I don't do design. That's why we have the magical Mr. Paul Dixon who creates all of these designs for us because uh, he's good at it. I don't, I'm not, but uh, Greg uh, teamed up with me on this one and we do have a tutorial on how to, uh, to do uh, like a, a basic um, kind of setup uh, on Canva. What was the name of the song? Which one? I have lots of songs. It's 10 minutes of songs. Uh, I don't know. So I'll read off the names of the songs that I use today in order. Vice, by Alder, Boom, like B three O's, Boom, <laughs> by Timothy Infinite, New Dawn is Rising by Stonekeepers, Faya by Catasco, Cataso, Cataso. I've never said that out loud. Sorry. Um, I think that was a. I think that was it. Good Rising uh, was also another one, um, but I don't know if we actually did that. Um, all right, what, what are those? Oh, giveaway. Uh, don't forget the Ecamm giveaway uh, is ending today. So get your, get your entry. That's the word. Get your entries in there uh, so that you can win potentially one of three different prize packs. How do we keep the camera from going to sleep? Oh, good question, Sig. Okay, so what you want is a uh, dummy battery. So, uh, it depends. Well, there are a couple of different things here. Some cameras are going to do that. So that is not a streaming camera. Not all cameras work for streaming. Um, but sometimes it may be a battery issue. You can get a dummy battery. So there are a couple of different reasons why that may be happening depending on the camera that you have. So um, if your camera is not on the approved list for streaming cameras, then that may just be something that you need to upgrade. Uh, there are some hacks that you can also uh, integrate, but I wouldn't do those at this point. Uh, I would just, you know, kind of switch gears there. And you can sell that camera so that you can afford to, to, to get a different one. Do, do, do. You enjoyed it. Good. I'm glad. So glad. Uh, I would like a lamb shoveling snow if that's possible for Christmas graphics. <laughs> Oh my God, that would be so cute. Wouldn't that be so cute? Like the little lamb. Lamb is uh, the live adrenaline monster. I don't have him programmed right now, but um, he's our live adrenaline monster that I talk about uh, that, that the fear in your brain when you're going live. Wouldn't it be so cute if there was like a whole bunch of snow and then he's like shoveling across throughout the show? <laughs> he's like, oosh, oosh. <laughs> Does he, he has arms, right? <laughs> That's a great idea. I love it. I don't know. 
we're, I, 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 I am not in charge uh, when it comes to graphics or whether we're having Christmas graphics or anything like that. So we do have the snow still on. So you could actually go to the store now and get the snow overlay. Uh, so to start the Christmassy spirit. Uh, so yeah, that would, that could be a winter graphic. Yes, yes, totally. We <laughs> we already have one, um, if not more. But I think snow is like our winter graphic uh, that everybody loved last year. So yeah, super fun. Okay, you guys, we're going to dance this baby out. So put those dancing shoes on. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope that this was super helpful. And now that you have other options for doing more without dragging your computer down. Um, be sure to subscribe whatever channel you're watching on. Turn those notifications on here on the Live Streaming Pros channel. I'm live uh, Monday and Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Friday is our open Q&A day, so come ask your questions, all that you can think of. And on the Ecamm channels, there's a whole lot of content um, and multiple shows uh, throughout the week as well. So you've got a lot of resources at your disposable at your disposable <laughs> okay let's dance this baby out <laughs>